very flat. And, you know, it's a, it, then you can really have a conversation. Like, if something's just flat, like, these works are not flat. They have, like, a texture, and there's different shenanigans happening on the surface. Like, there's stuff I've chiseled off and filled in and stuff. And so, because of all that, that's why I called it sculpture. Just so that, you know, people wouldn't think I was trying to pass these off as paintings. I mean, they're not really drawings. I mean, you can call them paintings, but they're not paintings. They're, they're sculptures. They have to be sculptures. Can you kind of explain a little bit uh, the timeline or the story of how you were, how you got into making books and then you partnered with someone to actually have a, a small press, right? Yeah. Well, I started, I mean, I've always made books I, and, and because of printmaking, as I studied printmaking and stuff, I have to, um, you know, and I learned in printmaking they teach you Japanese binding, which is like this, which is where you sew the book, you know, the books together. So I've always sewn um, pretty much any loose paper together that I can and made books. Since college, since high, since high school and college, mostly college, and then when I moved to New York, and I didn't have a studio for a few years, I mean that became a big part of what I did because you don't need a studio, and I could do it all at Staples or or by hand at home. This was the pages that made up. Uh, these are the originals from another book. See, I drew them on half page and then this would get photocopied and cut in half but then afterwards I just bound all the originals too. See like these books are just newspaper like just randomly bound. Mm -hmm. yeah, How did you like, choose the, uh, the which papers to use? Is it like one volume or is it like, did you pick a copy of the post to make that book, or is it like originally, tons of stuff from random sources? Originally, I did. I did just pick it. Yeah, this was the first one. It was just, I was walking by a newsstand, and they had thrown out a big stack of New York Post all the same day, and I'm like, mm -hmm. in, in 2004, and I just bound it. I cut it and bind it, so yeah, it was one day of the paper. But... Then I realized it doesn't, you know, really matter. But Dieter Roth had done this too, so I knew, like, I mean, it's what I figured is the thing would just age, and then it would gain its own. It's like these cars would start to look older, and they do. But it becomes a collage. Like in 2007, which is only like not even 10 years ago, they were so different. Like I thought it was so funny because everyone was painting like skeletons smoking cigarettes and, you know, representational paintings like monsters and stuff um, back then. So I, like as a joke, did a show called Abstraction and just made abstract paintings, you know, are there, I made, I just set up to make really good paintings that, that meant something to me in an abstract format. And uh, I did it by, you know, using colors and shapes and layering like triangles and zigzags. And, you know, I just looked at what an abstract painting was and, and used, you know, and took it apart and put it back together for me. And uh, it was it was such a great idea to me that like I didn't, you know, I did it like I called the show abstraction, <laughs> like I had thought of it, and uh, so at least I got to do what I wanted to. Um, 
Yeah, but a lot of people who became painters and st who now are painters and call themselves painters, and if you ask what they do, they say painter, um, are sculptors at the very best. More likely, they just like art. But so now, in this show that's coming up next week, I'm going to call it sculpture because I figure. Well, if you're making paintings, then I must be a sculptor. Because so I put frames on them, and they're kind of falling apart. So they have this sort of look. I mean, they're they are sculpture. This is a book that um, Printed Matter published in 2008. It's a they took the sign-in book from my show at Loring Augustine in 2007 and just reprinted it exactly so I can see like a lot of my friends here and what do you normally do uh, with the sign in book do you read it during the show? Or? No, the gallery just sends it to me. The gallery uses it for a mailing list, but they don't even, because people don't write their addresses, they, they just write their names. I think they just send it as a courtesy to the artist at uh -huh. this point. Uh -huh. It's nice to have it, actually, because, I mean, a lot of these people, Amy Stillman, again. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's just it's, a lot of these people are, I really like. But like, these are books that, are bound together. This is like a fix, like a sculpture. Mm -hmm. so, What's inside of it? It's just this old book that was uh, printed when I had the company that, that didn't come out good. Mm, cool. So I, I was throwing them out and I was like, oh, I can make these into some sculptures. And they do look good. These books are off-track betting. Like when I, when off-track betting was see all the I I was new to the city. I didn't know about it. like these are. I was just thought the horses' names were so great. This is the book of every fish from the state of Tennessee. See, this is Tennessee shaped like a fish. I guess sometimes I like to draw things just to remember like, how to draw. Printed matter did a um, they did a um, kind of a show of their history at NYU, and they set up a bookmaking area, and they and they asked me to go there and make some books, and I went for a week and made these this whole set of this whole set of books. All of these in this box too. I mean, obviously like I went because they had a spiral binding machine. <laughs> uh, and I always wanted to use one of those, but they also had a coffee machine that worked because mine are always breaking. This is the rubber vans, which I call them tornadoes because uh, that morning I found a whole bag of uh, reports that kids had done on tornadoes. This is an, another tornado one. People are always going to catch up to what you're doing. So you just got to go to the other side. Because like with the paintings and stuff that have been popular for some reason in the last, it's, they seem, it seems so dated, the whole thing. But like it happened so long ago, but it's still happening somehow. The, the, but I want to... The, what seems to? You know, the idea that all these artists are making these colorful sort of 
expressionistic abstract paintings. It's hard to believe it's going on right now, but it is. So I'm hoping that my white, like sickly, falling apart paintings will degrade like the perfection that people have discovered. And you know, that, like I want to break up. You know, it's like in a pool game when all the balls are in one mass, and you just sacrifice your shot just to break it up so the game's more fun. So I'm going to show something here that's, you know, it doesn't have the sheen and gosh of like gloss of the art fair booth type of thing where it's, where it's unequivocally like a sublime object. I want to make something, but I want, I hope to present something here that clearly has some problems and some issues. I think it's, I just want to break up the table some. And it's tough because you want to, you have to change. You can't keep giving them, you can't keep giving people what you want because what they want. Because they don't really know what they want. Like some people ask me to make a name painting and been really persistent about it, and then I've been like, fine, I'll make you one. Or I'll make you two. And then they don't like it because they got what they wanted. I mean, it's an interesting lesson, but it's a painful way to learn it. You're not painting like this anymore, and you're not happy with these, so... Well, I'm happy. I mean, I'm, I just... I just don't, uh... Yeah, I just don't feel the necessity to keep them all. But that being said, I mean, who knows? The best thing to do is stack them all up and then pull them out one by one. How did you get uh, the idea at first to make the name paintings? I guess I was studying printmaking too. And I, I needed to make something, you know, that didn't, so I didn't have to spend time on the print shop, valuable time, thinking of ideas playing around with, you know, the way something looked, I could just learn like, technically how to do things, and, you know, memorize them. So, yeah, I was doing simple things like the lines or the ladder, the step ladder, and then the name came, and I, you know, I was impressed, like, that the, the name was, you know, became backwards when you printed it, so then, like, that became enough to get you through the, the critiques and all that. And the thing looked fine. Like, they, they looked good. It was provocative and it looked... It's what I wanted to say anyway. Before I started doing the name, I was doing paintings of ladders. They were kind of like, you know, 
like a step ladder. And so, I, you know, and then I, then I started doing the names. So this kind of goes back to that. Like I did these sort of scribbly drawings and lines and stuff, just something that would fill up a space. Everyone kind of says about Twombly too, and yeah, I mean Twombly's there, he's not going anywhere. <laughs> but there's big differences between these, I would say, and his. And that mainly with things, like I'm trying to do the opposite of what he does, while still honoring, not honoring necessarily, but revering respecting and referencing, you know, what he established. I think that's fine. So I had these rabbit skin blue primed boards and I was going to throw them out. But in the summer when I was working on ceramics outside, I had them leaning outside under the deck and, and uh, I just started like scribbling on a few of them and spread them around for like a decoration and the sharpness of them and the amount of time and attention about yeah the accumulation of all the things and the simplicity of the end was just it just it fell into the right groove for me right then so I you know I, I wanted to present these even though they were raw or than what I was intending to be making. I mean I was just sitting there making ceramics and so this was made, you know, in the spirit of how paintings or and the the nonchalance nonchalance is is legitimate. I mean, it was very hot and I wasn't thinking about this type of thing at all, so it's, uh, it just felt it felt fine. So I kept them. And, you know, I won't prime anything else in uh, rabbit skin glue and the surface, this chalky surface is, I can't reproduce it, so I was like it gave me another reason to keep these I care about everything, but I don't really care about my own art. When I make art, you know, I don't, it always looks fine to me. And when you're not trying to control something, like it's really free. You know, people are calling all sorts of stuff paintings, and it's just not right. What's beautiful about basketball or any sport like that's on a field is that, you know, the field's always flat or a regulation thing. So, you know, at the end there's a result, and you can see something, there's something. But, and that's what's beautiful about painting, too, is it's a flat, two-dimensional surface, and you can just say your piece and... and and that's it. And, and when you put like an object on a canvas or dig a big hole in it or use like a rope or something, then you're, it's a sculpture. So you, when people call that stuff painting, it like cheapens the sport. I mean, I'm, I don't know what I'm going to do with this. I mean, I'm going to try to fix it, but. This is all scraped off. It's only half primed. And there's just like two black lines and these red lines. But, but still, like, there's a whole story, you know, going on between some simple things. Just as much of a story as it's like two people talking on the street or a still life or something.